Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you have never been here before, I officially welcome you to the world of health IT here in my little bubble here. And I wanted to thank you guys for once again watching. And from the description, you know that this video is going to be about my experience taking the CRCR certification. I officially passed the exam as of yesterday, which was May the 6th, 2024. And um, it was a very tough exam. And so I wanted to first introduce the exam to those that have never heard about it. And also for those that may be taking it or planning to take it soon, give you just my experience and my tips for you to be successful. So keep on watching. <laughs> The CRCR exam is actually something that is hosted not under AHIMA, not under HIMS, but actually under a different organization, the HFMA, which stands for Healthcare Financial Management Association. So if you're wondering whether or not this certification is for you, then I want you to imagine yourself being that health IT professional that is very passionate about revenue cycle, very passionate about the financial aspects of health IT. And if that is you, then one of their many certifications may be something that you wanna look into. So they do have membership just like AHIMA and HEMS does. And so um, I am now a member, uh, but if you have never heard of it and you're thinking about Looking into it, I definitely recommend checking out their website, seeing if there is a benefit of you becoming a member. As a member, they do have some local chapters available. Um, I'm actually in the Texas area, so I have my own Texas chapter to attend, but every single area apparently also has a local chapter, just like Ahima and Hems does as well. Let's go ahead and talk about the exam. The one that I decided to take was the CRCR. And the reason why I took the certification is because I really wanted to solidify my understanding of the revenue cycle process. Yes, I understand the basics of it. I'm able to teach others about it, but there's a lot of details and a lot of things that I really wanted to get a good handle on. And also I really wanted to take the certification because there are some patient communication techniques and rules and things that I just really wanted to learn more about and really test myself and see if I would be able to understand it enough to pass and get the certification. So that was my reasoning for doing for, for actually doing the exam. And how did I hear about the CRCR? Well, I actually learned about the certification a while back, actually, in one of my old positions where it was actually an option for some people. So I didn't take it at that time. It wasn't really in my, in my you know, wheelhouse to do it, but it was something that I knew that at some point in my career, I would want to go ahead and attempt and take it. So I'm happy that I did end up taking it at the time that I did now because now I have a better understanding of it, a better understanding of healthcare, and I just appreciate it more. One thing that I do want to know is that for this certification, there is a maintenance process. So every two years, the certification does expire. So at that moment, in order to maintain my certification, I will, and for any future CRCRs out there, you would also need to pass a 50 question quiz and also have access to their updated course that you will be using to take this exam. So the learning never stops. There is gonna be some financial responsibilities with this certification. So just something to keep in mind if you are thinking about getting this certification. Like any other certification, there is some financial responsibility required. The coursework itself was four units with tons of information that stemmed from the beginning of the revenue cycle management process all the way to post-service. And they also had a great unit that was dedicated to actually educating you more about just revenue cycle management in general. So if you are someone that doesn't know a whole lot of information about revenue cycle, then their curriculum will definitely give you 
enough footing to understand exactly what's going on. The great thing about the CRCR program is that it's on demand. So I was able to log in at any point that I had throughout the day and from there just continue with my studying. So if you're concerned about having to learn this material on a set schedule, no. This is on demand information that you can learn at any point within your busy schedule, which was great. You are given 12 months from the time that you sign up for the program to actually complete it and take the test. So if you know that you're gonna take longer than 12 months, then you may wanna wait a little bit before you actually attempt to study for the certification. The CRCR exam has 75 questions that you need to answer in 90 minutes. And it seems like a lot of time, but I promise you guys, it is not. For me, in my experience, I had about three minutes to answer six questions because I was thinking and a lot of questions look like one could be right and, and maybe this other one could be correct. It was just a whole mess. So your time is very valuable. Make sure that you're moving as swiftly as possible. You're actually not even able to go back or even flag questions. So once you answer a question and you go on to the next question, that is it. You cannot go back again. So that's another thing about this exam that makes it super challenging. The caveat with this is if you do not pass your exam with a 70 or above, then you have to wait 30 days before you can actually take the exam again. So I did not want to retake it again. And so it was my mission to pass it the first time. And I want you guys, if you're planning to take this exam, to also knock it out the first time. So let's talk about my tips on how you can successfully pass this exam the first time. You want to make sure that you actually understand all of the details that are in the units. And as I mentioned before, there are four units. And so as you are going through all the different modules, you want to make sure that you read every single word. And the reason why you should read every single word is because the questions can be pulled from any little detail that they had in the lectures. Another tip I will say is you want to make sure that you complete all of the quiz questions that they provide and that you click on every single image that they have for you to learn about the steps of doing something or the order to do something because all of those details matter for this certification. This is not a certification where, okay, I know the basics and I'm going to pass it. Absolutely not you have to understand the details because they love, from my experience, I'm um, taking the exam, they love to mix in different concepts and you're only gonna really know the right answer if you were actually paying attention and you could build a connection between the different terms and understand the different categories that terms belong to. Very easy to get things complicated and that of course, it's not something that you want to do or have to deal with when you're being timed. So please make sure that you also do that. Another tip I have is to make sure that you take your exam in a quiet location free of distractions. I took my exam at the library because I just happened to be there and I had to deal with people that were having a lovely conversation when I had about 10 minutes left on the clock. And I had to block them out and try to read the questions and understand what I was trying to answer and pick the right answer. And it did add a lot of stress, especially for me in those last 10 minutes. So make sure that as you're taking this exam that you find a quiet location. Yes, you are taking the exam on your own. You're not going to a testing center to do this. You'll be taking it directly from your laptop, but it doesn't take away from the pressure and from the, you know, the, like the actual experience that you get when you're in a real Pearson or whatever other organization's testing center office. It's the same pressure. <laughs> so you want to make sure 
that you just place yourself in the right environment to take this exam because you need every single second. And my last tip is simply make sure that this is something that you really want to do. Yes, it's cool to have a certification, but certifications, especially one like this, is going to require someone who has a real desire to learn the information. So if you know that you're not going to want to sit there and try to understand all these different reports and all of these different financial terminologies and this whole revenue cycle process, then save your money, save your time, right? Because it is going to be a cost to you in money and also in time. So you want to make sure that you're in the right headspace so that you're able to actually put in the effort required to pass it because this is a very tough exam. If you're looking for more information about the HFMA or even about the CRCR certifications, along with the other certifications that they have, please check them out. I will have the link to their website in the description for you. So feel free to check it out and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.